Welcome to another moment in the Word. We're continuing in John. We're looking at chapter 1 and verses 3 through 5. This is the conclusion of the prologue to the book of John. John, remember, is written that you might know that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Mashiach, that he is the Son of God, that he is God, and that believing these two things, you might have life through his name. So what we're looking at in the beginning, it's called the prologue, it's the introduction, it's the explanation as to who Jesus is. We saw in verse 1, in the beginning. In other words, Jesus is before the beginning. He was. He is eternal. Secondly, we found also that he is the Word. He is the expression of the Father. He is God. And thereby, the very last part where it says in verse 1, and God was the Word. That's the way it see, is seen in the Greek. God was the Word. Was means that it was forever being, before creation. Now we're looking at verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness overcame it not. So as we look at this, first of all, we see all things were made by him, so that the one who is eternal, the one who is God, is also creator. He made all things. That word made is in the aorist tense, that he created it once in time, and it's forever done. Creation is finished. All things that God had made, it, made in those first six days, they are finished. Nothing was made that, was, that exists apart from him. He created all things. And so we find that uh, when we say all things, that means all. Remember, all is all, and that's all that all means. He is literally the one who creates anything that you know. We know from the laws of physics, the first law is that matter is neither created nor destroyed. It may change in its form, it may change in, in its uh, uh, expression, but it never changes in its essence that it always is. The very things that Christ had created still are as they were. However, it is because of what happens in creation. Remember that we look in the very beginning and we saw that God created the heaven and the earth. We see now that all things were made by him and was not anything made that was not made. He puts it first in a positive expression and now as a negative, that there is nothing that exists that he didn't create. We see now that this is not the typical dualism or as the Chinese think of it as the yin and the yang, where there's light and darkness and there is a, a pull between good and evil, between the forces of light and darkness. No, God created all things. He is all. This isn't a contest between God and the devil. God is in charge. He is sovereign. And so as you look at the darkness that's in the world now, you know he created all things. And he created you. And that therefore, as you look at what's seen in the world today, you know he's in charge. So as we see, all things were made by him, and there was nothing that was made that was not made by him. Verse 4, in him was life. Notice he's changed now from focusing on Jesus as creator now to Christ as Redeemer. He is looking at the fact that he brings life because he is life. God is life. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is no life apart from God. There is nothing that exists apart from him. There is nothing that is living apart from him. That as David said in Psalm 36, For you are the fountain of life, and in your light we see light, so that Jesus is the one who brings life to us. Now, when God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden, remember what he said. 
In the day you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, in that day you die. What happened? They rebelled against the word of God, rejected the word of God, believed the lie of Satan, and as a result, they were separated from God, and separated from God is to be separated from life. Being separated from life, they died. How did they die? They died spiritually. Now, did they die physically? Eventually, yes. Notice what it means to be born again. Jesus says, and it's to Nicodemus in chapter 3, that you must be born again. To be born again, the word is born from above. What is it that happens when we're born again? The Spirit of God comes within us. What happens? The Holy Spirit gives us life. What kind of life? Spiritual life. Will we physically die? Yes, we physically die, but because we are born again, we receive a new body, and thereby, as we saw in the garden, we die spiritually and eventually die physically. But if we're born again, we are born spiritually, and our body, we get a new body and born again. What a wonderful, powerful testimony that in him was life. And that was is imper imperfect. It means he was the life in the garden, he is the life now, and he will be the life in the future. That when Adam rebelled against God, he rebelled against Christ. He rebelled against the word of God. He rebelled against life and thereby died. What we're witnessing in the world today is a love of death, is, is, a, is a culture of death. Why? Because there is a rebellion against God. And so he says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. It is Christ living in our midst that then we see God. And why is that important? God is life. If we see God, come to God through Christ, we have life. Apart from him, we are in darkness. Now notice that the darkness here is not just the absence of light. That is true. Cold is the absence of heat. Darkness is the absence of light. But it's more than that. It is that darkness is evil. Darkness is personal. Darkness is what Satan is. He is the prince of darkness. And the world in this present time is in darkness because of its rejection to God and of Adam's giving to Satan control to dominion, to have dominion over the earth. And so consequently, men are in darkness at the present time. But the light shines in the darkness. How did that happen? When Jesus came into the world, he came in one of the, if not the most, darkest period in history. And in that time, he is the light of the world. And he gives now to us who know him, who have the Spirit of God dwelling within us, the light. So he says in John 8, I'm the light of the world. And in Matthew 5, you're the light of the world. So let your light so shine before men. They see your good works. And what happens? They glorify the Father. Because that light isn't you. That light is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, dwelling within you. That's the hope of glory. And the darkness did not overcome it. It didn't overcome it. Light always overcomes darkness physically, but that's also true spiritually. The light of the life of God in Christ always overcomes the evil that's in the world today and that was in the world in the day in which our Lord was walking on this earth, in the day in which it was in the garden. There is always darkness in this world as long as Christ is not reigning in the hearts of men. However, that brings us to the conclusion, and that is, you have a choice. Will you yield to the darkness and thereby reject God, and walk in the vanity of your own life. And as you see the world that was created, but was without form, 
void and darkness upon the face of the deep. What a picture that is of a life without Christ, without form, void, and darkness. Darkness that's not just the absence of light. Darkness which has yielded to the powers, the spiritual wickedness that's in the world or else. I acknowledge that I have been walking in the darkness of my mind. I have been playing like God myself. I have rejected his word, and I've acknowledged that Jesus alone is the light, and he overcomes. That word, to overcome, means to violently grasp. No longer without form. It has meaning. It is no longer without any substance, and darkness is not upon the face of the deep. Instead, the Spirit of God dwells within you and gives you love and joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and His control. I pray this morning you know Jesus as your Savior, not only as the one who is eternal, not only as the one who is God, not only as the one who is Creator, but the one who is Redeemer, the one who has overcome darkness. And we're going to be seeing in the balance of the book of John how he does that. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for you sending your son that we might have everlasting life. If there is any listening that do not know Jesus as Savior, as Lord, as light and life, we pray, Father, that they might come to know you today. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.